All right, so your essential question today is what charge will the transition metals develop? So we've learned about our S and P block elements, and we know that their charge corresponds directly with their valence electrons, which we can tell just by looking at their group number. If you remember, the transition metals are in the D block, or kind of in that center portion, that big rectangle in the periodic table. And so their group number is a little different. They have complicated um, electron configurations, so they can have different numbers of valence electrons and form different oxidation states or different charges. We're also going to be talking about polyatomic ions today, um, and that's actually what we'll be talking about first. So you can pause this video at any point if you need to um, write anything down or rewind it if you need. But basically, polyatomic ions, if you think about that word, poly means many, and there's, so there's many atoms within one ion. So instead of just like Na1+, like sodium with the positive charge, you can have something a little bit more complicated. Um, essentially, these elements or these atoms are going to be covalently bonded, so the individual atoms don't have a charge because they're sharing electrons, but the whole molecule that gets produced does have a charge. When you write the chemical formula, you're still going to crisscross the charges just like what we did um, with our regular ionic bond. So if we take a look at this first example here, we are just going to take that one, crisscross it over to the carbonate, and the two, and crisscross it over to the sodium. So when we write that out, Na gets a 2, and our CO3 would get a 1, and if you remember, we don't actually need to write the 1s out because they're redundant. So what this molecule would look like, it would be carbon, and it actually has a double bond to an oxygen, and then it's bonded to two other oxygens. So that's our CO3. And then we've got two sodiums, so each of those bond to one of these single-bonded oxygens. So just so you can imagine what that molecule would look like. In that example that we just did, there was not a number that had to, or a subscript that had to go next to the carbonate, um, but in this example, we'll have one of those. So if we crisscross our charges here, the Mg would get a 1, so we can leave that off, and our NO3 would get a 2. This makes it look like there's one nitrogen and 32 oxygens. That's definitely not what this molecule looks like. Um, so if you ever run into this, just put a parenthesis around the polyatomic ion to show you that this would actually be a magnesium and it's going to be bonded to two NO3s. Oops, just so you can imagine that. When you name these, you don't add ide at the end like what we did with our other anions. You just say the name or write the name of the polyatomic. So these are the common polyatomic ions that you should be aware of for this class. There are 11. Um, you do need to memorize these. Next class we will have um, our first attempt at a polyatomic ion quiz, and then the following class you will have another attempt, and I'll just keep whatever score is higher. Um, the way the quiz will be set up, I might like write down ammonium, and so you would have to know that's NH4 1 plus, or I might give you NH4 1 plus, and so you would need to write ammonium. So you're going to have a, a mixture of those two types of questions. So number one and number two, we're just naming these compounds. So we see NH4, we recognize that's a polyatomic, so that will be ammonium, and then we just have plain um, chlorine anion, so that would be chloride. This next one we have beryllium, and that SO4, we can recognize that as one of our polyatomic ions up here, um, and that is sulfate. When you get to number three and four, I've provided the name, so this is where you need to write the chemical formula. This one, you have to think about it a little bit more because you have to take into account the charges so that you can crisscross them. So if you remember, barium, Ba, is going to have a positive two charge. And if we look up at nitrate, we can see it has a negative one charge. So when we crisscross this, we need to take into account those charges. And so we'll use our parentheses so we don't have NO. 32. Our next one, we have ammonium and sulfate, so we've got two polyatomic ions there. So when we crisscross those charges, NH4 with the 2, and then our sulfate is SO4, and it would be getting a 1, so we don't need to write anything with that. So moving on to our next thing, this is relating to our essential question about the variable charged cations. So this has to do with our transition metals. 
Essentially, they don't always have one charge. They can have different charges. Because they're metals, they are going to form cations, so they do that by losing electrons, and they'll end up with a positive charge. The only difference is with the naming. So you can't just call something like how you did with the previous ionic compounds because you have to indicate which charge it has. So for example, I just want to show you. So copper can bond to chlorine in different ways, if this will load. You might remember um, during the flame test lab, this teal chemical on the bottom here, that was at one of our stations. Um, it has, it's like that teal crystal, that's copper two chloride. So that means that the copper lost two electrons and then bonded to chlorine. The one up in the top right, that one's copper one chloride and it means that copper lost one electron and bonded to chlorine. So even though you still have copper bonding to chlorine, you can see that these chemicals are totally different, so you can't just call it copper chloride. So we indicate that if you look up at the top of my search bar, um, I have the Roman numerals in parentheses. So look down here. Um, this is the next page in your packet, but it really just has the common charges of all these different ions. Um, as you can see, it's the transition metals, and even some of the post-transition metals will have variable charges as well. The easiest way to do this is to draw a picture of these molecules. So for this one, we have two golds and three oxygens. So if I draw two gold chemical symbols and three oxygen chemical symbols. If we look back at our periodic table, we'll see that oxygen always has a negative two charge, but gold could be positive three, it could be positive one. So that's why we need to indicate that in the name. So if oxygen is always negative two, if you add all these up, that adds up to a negative six charge. So that means that these two gold atoms or these ions have to counteract that negative six, which means that they need to add up to positive six. So our total charges on oxygen, so we said we're negative six, total charges on gold are positive six. If we have two gold atoms, then that means that each gold has to have a charge of positive three. And so when we name this, it will be gold, Roman numeral three, oxide. So you might be wondering, why can't you just look at the subscripts and just kind of like undo them in your head? So there's a three right here. So why can't you just imagine that it was gold three without having to like draw this picture or think about it? And that's because sometimes the chemical formula will be in its empirical form or it will be reduced. So I'm going to show you an example of why it's better to just draw the pictures. So if you had lead bonded to two oxygens. If we draw this out, you can think, okay, there's one lead, there's two oxygens. We know our oxygens are negative two. So that means that they add up to negative four. And so that would mean that this single lead atom has to take all the positive charge. So it would be lead positive four. So this chemical here would be lead four oxide. If you were just looking at the subscripts up here, you would probably think that was lead to oxide. So that's why it's better to just draw the pictures or at least try to kind of like imagine this visual in your head. Um, so that is all for this lecture. Uh, just complete the rest of the questions in this packet.